What's going on everybody? Today's video, we're going to be hopping back on the race car. We're going to be installing this coolant overflow reservoir right here, but we're gonna be doing a few little neat things to it, so let's jump into it. All right, so here we are with our 3.5 EcoBoost swapped into my 99 chassis Mustang. Obviously, all custom lean forward radiator, intercooler, everything. This is a sealed radiator or sealed system, I, I think they're called, where the cap is actually on the pressurized, you know, expansion tank up there. Now, I put it back there because, you know, level wise, it's the highest point of the system. Any air that makes it out, the radiator does have this. Uh, tube right here which goes to I think that's the top of the water pump in there um, and then comes around it's this tube right here up to the expansion tank and that is a 16 pound cap and then out of the bottom of this it's that tube right there it goes through the wheel well it's this one coming out which goes back into the side of the water pump now this is plumbed in exactly like this engine would be in an F-150 that it came out of um, obviously just stuff's kind of customized, but all the hookups are the exact same. Now, I'll put a tag up here if anybody's interested in the racing videos. The first race of VIR last year, I had one of these kind of universal plastic ones in there. And what happened was this little nipple on the bottom cracked at some point. And this thing used to be mounted all the way up on the beam, all the way up here. And as you can see, that's very far forward. On top of that, <laughs> you can see it's in front of the tire. So when this started leaking and dripping, a lot of that fluid, now I do have my splitter here, but you know some of it I'm sure was kind of making it onto the tire. So if this little nipple on the bottom just broke broke, that could have been a big issue. Not only that, we're hanging, I don't know, it's only maybe two, three pounds, but we are hanging it so far forward that being able to put this one somewhere in here, should be advantageous in the fact that you know we're just moving a little bit of weight rearward if it develops any sort of leak or anything it's falling behind the tire to begin with so it's not as big of an issue and if you didn't watch that uh, video that i tagged earlier you can see this is the at track you know temporary fix that hung in there for three weekends just ended up doing the uh, relief all the way into here almost like a straw once the pressure built up and that cap open it would fill this up and then when it cooled back off since this hose goes all the way to the bottom would kind of suck it back in obviously that was a you know temporary solution that ended up lasting all season <laughs> so yeah doing this aluminum one will be nicer all right, so here's the kit that I went with. Got it off of Amazon. Here's the exact one that it is. I'll put a link to this exact one in the description below. But when I was looking for these things, I knew I was gonna customize it, modify it. I pretty much needed like this and that was it. It's kind of funny how if you end up searching them, there's this, this exact bottle is rebranded four, five, six times. Um, even though it's the same exact kit. So some factory, most likely in China. Oh yeah, there you go. Made in China. Um, is cranking these things out, selling them to other people. They rebrand them and then just resell them. So, you know, they're all relatively the same. It fit the space that I want it to go. So good enough for me. Yeah, what we're gonna do is kind of just make sure this fits. Here's the little brackets that it comes with. Um, and get started on it. So, funny enough, these two little holes right here, I have no idea what they used to be or what they were for, but look at this. This bracket that comes with it fits on there perfectly. <laughs> and that's not some sort of video magic. That happened to just work out that exact way. This bracket's gonna go right, oops, this bracket's gonna go right there. This is gonna get strapped to that down low enough because what we're gonna do, this little pressure relief hole right here, we're gonna open that up and actually tap it with an MPT tap and put a barb on it. That barb, we're gonna hook a little hose 
and poke through this cow panel or something somewhere so that way if this ever gets so hot and pushes so much water into the reservoir it'll come out and hit the windshield right about here rather than pushing out anywhere under the car so if i'm racing for whatever reason i'm right on somebody's bumper it's an extra hot day you're not focusing on your temperature gauge even though with the mxg i have alarms set that visual you know little bit of water coming up and hitting the windshield obviously not in my view but off to the side it could potentially save you from overheating the engine as well all right so that's kind of my overview of my plan uh, enough chatting let's kind of get into i guess mocking up this thing mounting it cut and run the hose and then most of the modification is going to come on the lid or the cap Actually pretty solid there's the tube makes the bends just fine no kinks or anything all right so there you have it hope you learned something thanks for hanging out and I'll see you guys in the next one all right I'm just kidding because that would be too simple I could technically use it as it is and how I have it at this point you know everything would work fine just like my old bottles just everything moved to here but me being me we're gonna modify it a little bit like I mentioned earlier Want to drill at the top do a few things kind of just because i can kind of just because i want to just make it a little bit of a neater project so let's get modifying this cap all right so the cap like i mentioned we're going to drill out the center hole bigger to thread it to a eighth npt but the other thing i'm going to do if you look at this thing it's like solid aluminum there's a lot of weight in this cap that doesn't need to be there on the mill, what I'm going to do is almost like a, uh, you know, a scalloped cutout where I'm going to, you know, mill out a bunch of like chunks of aluminum that just don't need to be there. Just kind of just for fun, fun little project, lose some weight in the process. So let's get cracking on those. All right. So very first thing I'm going to do is just run a quarter inch drill bit through this to be able to hold it on the mill, which we'll jump to next. I'm going to be holding this from the inside because I obviously don't want to pinch down on the threads. Fortunately, this all works. And since it's aluminum and there's already this little hole in the center, no need to center drill it. All right, and as you can see, the reason we put a hole through the center is so we could put a bolt through it, which allows us to then use these are brand new to me, some 5C collet blocks and 5C collets. I got a whole assortment of them. Um, but now what we can do is chuck this up to be able to make our cuts on the lid. All right, so here's my setup. Again, the cap. The largest end mill I have is a three quarter. I do have a boring head, but I think that would be too much for this project. But as you can see, I'm just gonna reference the edge of the vise with the line. And just rotate it all six times and just mill out you know a little scallop six very evenly spaced notches around the lid this is the square collet block which i'll be using to do flats in a little bit but this is in here so when i crank down on the vise the vise won't shift it just holds it nice and even so let's go ahead and get cutting um get this turned down All right guys, I messed up. <laughs> I'm gonna leave all that in the video so you can kind of see that, you know, not everything always works out perfect. So I'll show you what I did. You know, let's go back to the setup. I ended up moving it 
I ended up moving it a little bit more center because apparently this square block is a little bit wider than this. You can see how it started cutting just a little bit, but once it gripped in all these little, you know, chatter marks, this cap, I can actually turn it by hand because it, it's tight. I can't get it tight enough. So what we're going to do is clean up the bottom of this on the lathe. Maybe just turn a little bit of, you know, diameter off this or put a notch in it or I don't know. And then just keep moving it along. All right, so here's where I'm at. I was able to clean up this inside face and then I put a little grooving tool on it, put a few grooves in it. I don't know, just kind of wanted to tinker more than anything, but there's still plenty of grip to turn it. So that was kind of, you know, a bit of a learning experience where the mill setup didn't work, um, but you know, was able to save it. So yeah, on to doing the MPT fitting. Then from there, we'll do the um, other part. We gotta mill out for the, you know, exit tube, whatever, blow off tube. All right guys, so I messed up yet again. You're gonna laugh at me when I show you this one. So here's the cap. Here's the, you know, obviously the fitting we just put on. A hose is supposed to run from here to the little piece that we're gonna make out here. When I close the hood, it might be really hard to start seeing, but it either touches the hood or is you know, so close, there's no way a hose would be able to make that turn. So, we got to go back to the 90 degree fitting <laughs> that I originally had. So we're just going to put this fitting in, and obviously once we do that, we'll have plenty of space. What I need to do though is not drop it. Uh, this cap is tight. I'm going to put a line the direction we need to go, and then that's where I'll stop tightening the fitting. All right, so we're in, we're tight. It lines up the same every time it gets to a pretty decent amount of tightness. So now we need to work on the little fitting or whatever we need to make that's gonna poke through here to blow off that extra pressure up rather than just leak on the tire or wherever else. In real world time, a couple days has passed and I came up with this little option. This probably doesn't make too much sense right now so I will overlay the CAD model that I made, show you kind of what I got going on there. And then I turned that CAD model into a drawing and the drawing is right here. So I have all of my measurements. We got our little wrench flat so you can see where we're gonna thread it down. And yeah, I think we need to, we'll just start with the little M6 button head that's gonna go onto the top surface. And then this whole piece can be made out of a half inch aluminum bar, which I have plenty of. So let's get started on this. There you go, hole all the way through. That should work out pretty good.
All right, guys, so I wanted to go over my setup real quick. I told you the collet blocks would be back, but we're using the square side. We have our 3 8 inch end mill. And what we're going to do is come down and just put little flats in it. Put a little flat in it. Turn this 180 degrees, so that way the wrench flat is perfectly aligned with the other side, nice and simple. Now, to get our measurement, we know that we want a, it would be like this little notch right here. We want a 10 millimeter wrench so that's where that 0.390 is just about 10 millimeters so we need to come in or i guess come down 55 thousandths of an inch to get our wrench flat now in order to come down that perfect 55 thousandths we're going to somehow hook this uh dial indicator to somewhere on the head so when it comes down you know we can measure we'll touch off come down that 55 thousandths and be good. All right guys, so here's our setup. What I need to do now is just touch off. There we go, we're just touching. Now, I'm gonna put the camera down because I need two hands, but I'm gonna zero this out, move the vise away, come down my 55 thousandths, and then make my pass. All right, guys, so there's my drawing. Here's my part. Now, I did check the wrenches, and you can see we got a real nice fit right there. Check a different brand just in case. So, yeah, so that was kind of the only real, I guess, critical dimension was that 10 millimeter wrench flat. The bolt with the hole. Should be able to see, yeah. Goes, hole goes all the way through, so... I'm actually really happy how this little thing turned out um, for me for my little tiny super cheap machines kind of coming up with something that I need this is actually pretty cool I think the only thing I would really change maybe turn down just a few thousandths off the OD of the stock so that way the whole thing has like a nice machine look but uh, <laughs> this is actually pretty cool um, but yeah so now I can go ahead and finish up this project I think we'll use that little home. I'm sorry, that mark. Hold it with the wrench flat. All right, guys, so there you go. Overflow is hooked up. Once the engine warms up and pushes enough out of here, it gets held in here. There's the hose going in at the bottom, so that way it's never sucking in air. If this fills up, it'll push up, push out this tube, go right through there, and, you know, it's way off to the, you know, passenger side of the window, so no more overflow leaking on the tire. So, yeah, I'm happy with how this turned out. All right, guys, so there you go. A much more involved coolant overflow install than is necessary. I did it because I kind of wanted to, you know, tinker with the machines, kind of try and make some parts, do something a little bit, you know, creative. If you watched this, if you enjoyed it, please hit that subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up. It really helps me out. As always, guys, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you in the next one.